So the 5th century in Greece started off with the Persian invasions and ended with the Peloponnesian War. And now we're entering into the 4th century in Greece. And as we enter into the 4th century, Thebes is the dominant city-state. But as we get into the mid-4th century, and especially the end of it, we will see that all of Greece gets dominated and then unified by the Macedonians or the Macedonians. And in particular, the first unifier here was Philip of Macedon. And this is a bust of him. And he's known as he comes to power in 359 BCE. He comes to power, his father was king of Macedon. But then his older brothers die. He becomes, it's actually his nephew who is heir to the throne. He becomes regent for his, for his infant nephew, which means he has the power temporarily. But then he actually takes full control and becomes king of Macedon, or Macedon as it's often pronounced, in 359 BCE. And what he then goes off about doing is taking over most of the Greek city-states. And eventually, he's able to unify most of the Greek city-states. And you can see on this map here, which I got from Wikipedia, this is a little bit of information about the map, you can see how he expanded his empire over time. That, remember, 359 BCE, he becomes king of Macedon. In 352, he's moving into he's moving into Thessaly. Then in the in the 340s, he's going into Thrace. So he's going into Thrace and Molossia. And Molossia is interesting. The king of Molossia, he actually ends up mattering his, he ends up marrying the king of Molossia's daughter, Olympias, who ends up being Alexander the Great's mother. And she's a pretty interesting character, as we will see in a little bit. She uh, was part of this cult uh, that worshiped snakes. Uh, it is believed that she slept with snakes. Uh, but uh, he goes off and continues to conquer. Eventually, he's able to subjugate most of the city-states of Greece, except for Sparta. And that takes us, that takes us to 337 right over here, where he's able to establish the League of Corinth. It was only called the League of Corinth after the fact, but he gets the leaders of the significant city-states together in Corinth. That's why it's called the League of Corinth. And they swear their oath essentially to Philip, king of Macedon, who they call the hegemon. And what's really important about that is he's able to unify the Greek city-states outside of Sparta and in doing so, he sets things up for his son, the famous Alexander the Great, the Great, to continue to unify Greece. Alexander the Great's actually able to subjugate Sparta. But then more famously, he goes off to conquer the entire Persian Empire and then beyond in his short life. And we'll have at least another video on that. But just to get a, a feel for what happened at the League of Corinth in 337 BCE, I will share this this oath that the various city-states had to commit to. And it says, I swear by Zeus, Gaia, Helios, Poseidon, and all the gods and goddesses, I will abide by the common peace, and I will neither break the agreement with Philip, nor take up arms on land or sea, harming any of those abiding by the oaths. Nor shall I take any city or fortress, nor harbor by craft or contrivance, with intent of war against the participants of the war. Nor shall I depose the kingship of Philip or his descendants, nor the constitutions existing in each state when they swore the oaths of the peace. Nor shall I do anything contrary to these agreements, nor shall I allow anyone else as far as possible. But if anyone does commit any breach of the treaty, I shall go in support as called by those who need, and I shall fight the transgressors of the common peace, as decided by, as decided by the council and called on by the hegemon, who is, at, when, this, when the oath is made, who is Philip of Macedonia. Now, unfortunately for Philip, this happens in 337, where for the most part, he's the first to unify the Greek city-states outside of Sparta, but he's only able to live about a year after that. A year later, we're now in 336 BCE, and he's in the old capital of the Macedonian kingdom, which is very close to Pella. 
celebrating the wedding of his daughter to his to his brother-in-law. So his daughter, who is who is Alexander's sister, she is being married to Olympias's brother. So his he's marrying his daughter to her uncle, and it is during that wedding that Philip of Macedon is killed by Pausanias, who is his bodyguard. And there's a lot of really interesting stories. So he's killed at the wedding in 336 BCE. And there's a lot of really interesting stories about what the motivation for Pausanias was. There are many accounts that say that Pausanias was Philip's lover. He was on some level jealous, and he was on some level because uh, another relative of Philip uh, affronted Pausanias and Philip didn't go to defend him. There's some narratives that this was arranged somehow by Olympias, Philip's wife and the mother of Alexander to, to put Alexander on the throne. There are some motivations there because also a, shortly before the assassination, he took a second wife, which was his more favored wife as opposed to Olympias. So there's a lot of really interesting accounts and I encourage you to read up on it. But the interesting thing is, is after he gets assassinated, well, then there's a bit of a, uh, a, scrab a scramble for power, but it leaves Alexander the Great, or eventually, he, Alexander the Third officially, but eventually Alexander the Great becomes, becomes the hegemon. And he's eventually, in his short life, he's only 20 years old when he becomes king, he's able to, as we'll see in the next few videos, take over all of the Persian Empire and beyond and subjugate Sparta. So he further unifies the Greeks and takes on the mighty Persian Empire.